This is Nori from Smart Service, and today I'll be going over installing and updating Smart Service. If you're looking for a specific part of the process, please check the timestamps in the video description. Please note that with time, parts of this installation process may change, but we'll try to keep this video as relevant as possible. Before we get started, let's discuss what you will need to update Smart Service in the overall process. First, make sure you're able to install applications on this workstation. Second, Smart Service can only be installed on a Windows operating system. If you're using another operating system, you will need to configure some access to Windows. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to us or your IT department. To get a copy of the update file or to install the program, we're going to head over to smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. If you scroll down on the main page, you'll see a section for the current release of Smart Service. As of today, that release is 110.1. You can read these release notes here, which will tell you what changes are in the update, and you can click the download button here to download a copy of the update. If your browser gives you the option to run or save a file, go ahead and choose to save the file. If you have an older version of Smart Service already installed on your workstation, make sure to close the program before continuing. Once the update is downloaded, click on the update file in your downloads folder to get started. If the update file is fairly new, you will get a prompt from your antivirus software or Windows Smart Screen. As we are a small business, our software isn't downloaded as many times as, say, Adobe's software is. So as long as you got the file from our website, you're safe to run the file. On this first message, we'll click Next. The second message details our terms and conditions. If you agree to these terms and conditions, click the I accept the agreement option and then click next. Each update has a password associated with it, which is available with your current customer support plan for Smart Service. Please email us at support at myservicedepot.com with your company name and request the update password. If your office is not installing the latest version, please let us know which version you would like the password for. On this screen, you can choose to have a Windows desktop or quick launch icon created. This screen will tell you what Smart Service needs to install. If this is a new workstation, this process will take a few minutes. We also require Microsoft Access Runtime to make Smart Service work. You will see a prompt to install Access during the process if this is a new workstation. After the install is complete, you can choose to close the installer rather than continue online. If this is the first workstation to have this new version of Smart Service installed, you will see this additional Update Database prompt. Depending on what version of Smart Service your office was already running, this process could take a few minutes. We'll follow the prompts on screen and wait for it to complete and close the program. For those of you who are just updating your existing Smart Service workstation, once this Update Database prompt completes, you're done. You can log into Smart Service as usual and continue on with your day. Just make sure to let your coworkers know about the update so they can update their workstations as well. For the rest of us who are installing Smart Service for the first time in our workstation, we'll continue with the rest of the video. If this is the first time a Smart Service has been installed on this machine, we have some additional steps to complete before the program can be used. The first step being allowing Smart Service some Windows permissions. We have to add permissions for everyone in three places, the shortcut and the two Smart Service folders, one of which is in Program Data and the other in Program Files x86. We'll start with the shortcut on the desktop. Right click on this shortcut and click Properties. From there, go to the Security tab at the top and click the Edit button. In the resulting window, click Add and type in everyone in the available space. When you're ready, click OK. That should take you to the previous window where everyone is selected at the top. We'll want to check the full control in the Allow column here. With that done, let's click OK on these two windows and move to the other locations where we need to do this. For the next two locations, open File Explorer and navigate to Program Files x86 on your C drive as shown on screen. In Program Files x86, you should see a new Smart Service folder where we'll apply permissions for everyone as shown again on screen.
For the last location, Program Data, this folder may be hidden. In File Explorer, we can type a percent sign, Program Data, and another percent sign as shown on screen to quickly find this next location. In Program Data, we'll have another Smart Service folder, so let's add permissions to that as well. For our last step, we'll need to connect your workstation to the server via a new DSN. Don't worry if you haven't done this process before, it's a lot easier than it sounds. If you're using QuickBooks Desktop, go ahead and log into QuickBooks now. If you're using QuickBooks Online, you can proceed without opening QuickBooks. Click on your new Smart Service icon to open the program. From there, we're going to choose this third option, Open an Existing Smart Service Database. Click Open on this page and New on the resulting page. Scroll through the list and select SQL Server Native Client 10. You can click the letter S on your keyboard to make it down to this option quickly. With Native Client 10 selected, click Next at the bottom to continue. Here we can name our DSN. We usually pick SSX as the name for convenience. After entering the name, click Next for this prompt and Finish on this resulting prompt. Our next step is to enter the name of the server. This is the computer our installer first installed Smart Service on and the computer that has SQL Server on it. Enter that name, backslash, then smart service in all caps. We'll also need to add the port number at the end. To break this down, we have an example on your screen. Here you can see the server name, the instance name, and port number. Your instance name will always be smart service and your port number is likely to be 1433. Some of you may need to try port 1434 or 1435 if 1433 does not work for you. Once you've entered that information, go ahead and click Next instead of Finish. Here we need to enter the credentials for your workstation to access SQL Server. These credentials are displayed on screen and are case sensitive. Click the SQL Server option highlighted here and enter these credentials. Once you're finished, click Next to continue. For this section, check this box to change the default database to your database. The correct option will be something that is unique to your company and will not be Master, Model, MSDB, or TempDB. In my case, my company name is Bananaco. After choosing your database, click Next at the bottom. There's nothing to do on this screen, so go ahead and click Finish to continue and OK on the resulting pop-up. We can confirm our DSN by clicking OK on this screen. We'll need to enter those SQL login credentials one more time to complete this process. Again, I'll display those credentials on your screen for you to enter. For this last step, go ahead and click Finish. This step will take a moment as Smart Service attempts to use the DSN we just created to access the server. When it's finished, you'll be presented with the option to log into Smart Service. It's always a good idea to try to log into Smart Service so you can double check your work and make sure you're connected to the right database. Remember, if you're using QuickBooks Desktop, it needs to be running in the background in order for you to open Smart Service. With the program installed, this workstation is good to go. If you encountered any issues during this process, please reach out to us at support at myservicedepot.com or give us a call at 888-518-0818 to talk to our support team.